I'm Rick Johansson, and this is Iron Echo Design. Today, I want to show you how you can do this text effect where you wrap text around a corner like this, see? It's actually, I saw this in an Adobe Illustrator tutorial, and they have a very specific tool which lets you do it almost instantly. And I thought, I love doing experiments and seeing, can this be done in Inkscape? It turns out you can. It's very easy to do, and I'll walk you through step by step. First, let's set up our document properties so we have the exact same view if you want to follow along. If you're on Inkscape 1.2, go up here to this paper and wrench. It'll pull up your dialog box. If you're in an older version or it's the future and you have a newer version, go down to File, Document Properties. Basically, we want to go to the format of the page. You can do the default of B1, which is 707 by 1000 millimeters. We'll change the orientation to landscape. And I want the page, see this here page, I want it to be black like that. I zoomed out a touch here so you have a clear view. This is the B1 template. The first tool we're going to use is Create 3D Boxes. It's over here. Click on it once, and if you click and drag, you will see a 3D shape with some perspective guides here. If I grab this black X in the center, it's going to render the 3D box, look at that, anywhere you're pulling it. So you need to first choose what type of framework you want to bend the text around. If this is your first time trying this tool, let me explain what you're seeing here with all these lines. Looks a little bit confusing. Up in the top, if you have the tool selected, you have angle X, angle Y, angle Z. All this means is this dot over here, this is the perspective point for angle Z. On this side is the perspective point for angle X. For angle Y, you'll notice they're parallel. So they have this two lines, the parallel line selected. And that's what we want for this tutorial. We wanna have a hard vertical line. If I unclick it, it gets a little bit funky. It's putting a vanishing point somewhere based on the angle that you put in. So let's just keep it simple. Have the angle Y in the parallel, so it's a straight up and down. And the other points you can play with, either by moving the point itself, or if you grab the X, you can change your box again. But let's go ahead and make it where we have this face right here. We'll put the text, we'll bend it across this way. I can drag these nodes to make a longer box here, or you could pull down these nodes and it modifies the shape this way. It's actually pretty intuitive. I do want a little bit more surface area on the bottom, so let's modify this a tad. I'll leave it right there and let's go ahead and play with this. To lock in the 3D box the way you like it, go to Selector Tool and up in Path, Object to Path. Now you can grab it and move it around and it's not going to keep modifying itself with those vanishing points. I'll actually do shift and control together. If I drag a corner, I can make it bigger so it's easier for us to see. That part's done. Let's write our text. Go to the edit text tool. I'm going to be using the font called Enter. You can get it for free at Google Fonts and the license is open font license. You can use for projects, commercial or otherwise. So thank you, Google. Let's make sure our text looks like the way we want it before we type everything out. Wrap. I'm on enter heavy 200 point for character spacing. This is the kerning, how much space is in between the letters itself. Let's go down to negative five. Hit enter to go to the next line. Text, enter, around, corner, like this. See? Pause. It's me from the future having just finished this tutorial and I apologize. I see the typo, <laughs> but I'm not redoing it. Back to the tutorial. Now this won't look great unless we actually reduce the amount of spacing between the lines itself. So when you go to the edit text tool right here, it says AA 1.25. That is actually the spacing between the lines. Oops. Change that to maybe 0.8 and see what it looks like. 0.8 is pretty good. Maybe 0.79. All right, so there's many ways you can approach this. The way we're gonna do it today, this method, which is quick, is we'll first take this text and we have to go up to path and change it from object to path. Why? Because we're gonna do a path effect on it. I wanna slice it right down here so we can bend it across that edge. So we'll go to path effects, so path, path effects. You'll get a sidebar menu that is blank. So hit the plus and up here on the live path effect selector, look for something called slice. The menu layout seems to change every time you open it, but here it is right here, slice. Hit that once. It's one of the most simple, elegant path effects out there. All it does by default is cut it right down the center of whatever object you have. 
but we don't want that. We want to put it where we want to put it. So I'm going to go to Edit Paths by Node, and you'll see a little center diamond node here. You can drag this anywhere, and it's going to cut the object wherever you're putting it. I'm going to put it right about here, only because when I played around with this, it looks better when you don't chop up the letters right in the middle. So I have a piece of the E, just a touch of the C, part of the O, X, and the R. Go to Selector Tool, and the deed is done. I can now grab this half, and it's perfectly sliced. Let's put this one over here for a second. For the text, it's going to go on the front face. We have to go back to path, object to path. You'll know that works when you lose your path effect. So now this is fixed. Same thing over here. That's fixed just for safety, object to path. All right, and here is the trick. We made this 3D box. If I click it, the whole thing is a group. Go to object, ungroup. And now you see what's the stuff behind it. It's got more than just these three front faces. So I have one of them selected, hold shift. I'll take this one and down here, move it. And it leaves us with the back of the box, which I don't want. Here's a fun trick. If you hold alt, you can draw a red line and whatever you touch gets selected, delete. Let's put this back into view here, move this out of the way. And we'll do the effect. I have it selected, I'll hold shift and grab the front face where we want to put it and hidden under extensions, modify path, envelope. It will drop it right into place. Look at that. The second phase has a quirk. If I want to put this text here by default, it's going to run it this way. To get around that, if you have it selected, go up here to the directionals, flip it horizontally, and then 90 degrees to the left. Now you have it oriented this way. It's selected, hold shift, get this face, extensions, modify path, envelope and there you go it goes right the way you want it this is before we've even fixed the shading now for speed i wrote the bottom part already it's the exact same thing same font same everything pre-type for convenience again because of the default it wants to run this way so for the bottom just hit it one time 90 degrees to the right it's selected hold shift i've got the bottom extensions modify path envelope and you say, where did it go? What's going on there? Well, because I brought that text already, the hierarchy's messed up. It's there only underneath. I have the bottom panel selected, delete, and there it is. I can select the bottom, just do one arrow key down for a sliver of separation. Are you serious? I've got a spelling error. <laughs> It doesn't say this. Let's just keep it and call it an inside joke. Sorry about that, guys. Wrap text around a corner like thy, see? It's all good. All right, I promise if there's any future sponsors watching, we would clean this up for you, but let's just go forward. I'll take the panel we don't need, get rid of that. I'm gonna keep that one there so we can do the reveal at the end. I want this side pure white over here. I'm gonna change the color a little darker. So I wanna have my fill and stroke menu, object fill and stroke. I'm on fill and we'll change this one to maybe a gray or it already looks better like that. Somewhere in the middle between black and white right there is good. The bottom one, go closer to black like a darker gray. All right, let's take this purple panel away, delete, and there you go. <laughs> I can't believe the spelling error. Despite the typo, I hope this helped. If you have any trouble with it, let me know in the comments. I'll see if we can sort it out and we'll see you next time.